In this lesson, we look at the command module. The command module does the parsing and execution of commands entered on the console. As we shall see, some commands are executed directly by the command module, and others are passed to clients to be executed. And a client is some software that is using the command module. A client is often a, another module, but it doesn't have to be. The syntax of commands is pretty simple. It starts with a client name, then a command, and then optionally some positional arguments. So here are some examples of commands. Timer status, uh, DIO set, you know, and then LED21. During startup, the clients that support commands provide information about these commands to the command module. And this includes stuff like the client name, and then for each command, the command name, a callback uh, function pointer that executes the command, and then a help string for that command. So during the startup, the command module is building up information about all of these clients and their commands. Now, when we are running, the command module receives a command line from the console, and it first parses the command line, breaking it into tokens. Then it figures out uh, how to process the command. As I mentioned, it handles some commands uh, directly, like help, but for other commands, it finds out which client supports the command and invokes the client's callback func function to process that command. Now let's look at command processing done directly by the command module. In other words, the client doesn't get involved. A design objective of the command module is to maximize common functionality that the command module does to reduce the amount of work the client has to do. So the first thing is the help command. The command module has everything it needs to print out help information for all clients. It got that information during startup. So there is a global help command, that, and then there is a per client help command that will provide more detail. Note you can always use a question mark uh, rather than the word help to save a little typing. Next is the log level. The log level controls how much logging comes from a particular client, and it has values like error, warning, and debug. Command module will directly manage a client's log level if the client provides access to the log level variable during startup. By providing access, I mean it provides a pointer to the log level variable. So if it does, then here are the commands that are supported in the example of the TTYS um, module. TTYS log will print out the current log level and TTYS log debug will set the log level to debug. Now just for convenience, there are wildcard commands to get and set the log level uh, for all clients. The star is sort of like a wildcard. So star log prints the long log level for all clients and star log debug would set the log level to debug for all clients. Finally, we have performance measurements, or PMs. It works a lot like log levels. The command module will directly manage a client's PMs if the client provides access to PM information during startup. So here are some examples. TTYS PM will dump the performance measurements for the TTYS module, and TTYS PM clear will zero out the PMs for the TTYS module. So now let's look at the case where the client processes a command. As I mentioned, during startup, the client provides information about its commands to the command module. This includes pointers to the callback functions that process the commands. These functions are known as command handlers. 
The command module will call these command handlers when the corresponding command has been entered by the user. The command handler uh, function signature shows two arguments, argc, which is the argument count, and argv, which points to an array of pointers to the arguments themselves. You might notice that this function uh, signature is the same as for the main function in a traditional C program. And even though I use the term uh, argument, all of the tokens or words on the command line are passed in, including the client name and the command name. So here is an example for the command line DIO set LED, LED underscore 2, 1. First of all, the argc parameter is 4, and the argv parameter is represented here as pieces of memory. We have an array of pointers of length 4, and each element of the array points to a string, one of the tokens on the command line. The command function has to execute the command, whatever that means. If there are arguments uh, beyond the client name and command name, then the command handler has to interpret them. The command module does nothing in this regard. Note that there is a helper function uh, called command parsargs that helps you validate the arguments in a from a command handler. This includes converting strings to integers when needed. It also helps in the case when there are a variable number of arguments. Generally, the command handler prints any data to the user, including error messages, using printf. Here we see the major interaction between the command modules and others. There's not too much here. First of all, when the console receives a command, it passes it to the command module to be executed. And then there are a list of clients, which could be modules. And during startup, they register commands with the command module. They might also register information about their log level and uh, performance measurements. And then during running, when the command module um, receives a command, it finds the client that owns it and executes the callback. Now let's look at the header file for the command module containing the API. The first thing I want to show you is a type definition for the command handlers. Um, these are the callbacks. And this is a, a C uh, pointer from a C language viewpoint. And uh, the syntax is always a little tricky on these. The next thing I want to show you is the structure. This contains information about a single command and it includes right here that callback function. This structure here is all of the information that the client passes to the command module during registration and so it includes uh, the command information. It optionally includes a pointer to the log level variable and it optionally provides performance measurement information. In terms of the core APIs, uh, the only one that is used is the init function. And then here are the other APIs. Command register is a uh, important one. That's how the clients uh, register with the uh, command module. And there is a note here for this uh, API. It's almost a warning. It is saying that the command register, the command module, keeps a copy of the client info pointer, so that the command module can continue to access the client data as the system runs. This is done to save memory, since there's often not a lot of spare memory in embedded systems. The alternative would be for the command module to make a copy of the information. This is what would normally be done for Windows or mobile apps. So the client just needs to be aware of this um, and ensure that the command module will always be able to safely use that pointer. Normally that pointer is going to point to a static um, data structure and it will be just fine. So beyond this we have the command 
uh, execute API, which is called by the console whenever a command string is entered. And then this is that helper function, uh, command parse args, that's used by uh, command handlers to parse um, arguments that come with the command. Now let's look at the implementation for the command module. One thing I'd like to show you is this array. There's not really much state information in the uh, command module, but it does have this array of pointers. And as I mentioned uh, just a minute ago, when a client registers its information with the command module, the command module keeps a copy of that pointer to, to the client information. And this is where it stores it in this array, client info. Now, the, uh, here's the init function for command, and it doesn't do much interesting. Here is the command register function. And all this really does is uh, looks for a place to store that pointer uh, in that array. This function command execute, which is called by the console to execute a command, is uh, the heart of this module. And this function, frankly, is, is way too big. It's, it's, it should be broken up into smaller pieces. And this function is full of string processing. And the C language is not known for great string processing. processing. It is tedious, but you get used to it, and, uh, and there's a lot of it in here. Um, this would certainly be uh, some code to read and try to understand if you are um, trying to learn more about string processing in C. Uh, you might find a bug in here. I don't think so, but it's possible. Uh, and so you can see how long this function is. It's doing a lot. And then here is the helper function, which helps commands um, parse arguments. And uh, this is also a lot of string processing, as you'll see, not too long. And then there's a few utilities here, and that's it for the command uh, module. And once again, thanks for watching.